dear all in today's video i shall be discussing about rhinitis medicamentosa also called as rebound nasal congestion this condition is defined as inflammation of the nasal mucosa leading to rebound nasal congestion which is caused by overuse of topical nasal decongestants for more than 10 to 14 days it is a subset of drug induced rhinitis there are many drugs which cause rhinitis but Topical decongestants can cause rebound phenomena. Prolonged use of nasal decongestants leads to tachyphylaxis that is defined as increased amount of drug required to perform the same function or decreased response to use of drug. That leads to more frequent dosing and more amount of the drug also. That means when the patient requires two drops three times a day in normal situation, patient may require three drops six times a day like that. Nasal medications containing benz alkonium chloride which is antimicrobial preservative used in the nasal drops cause more rebound congestion by inducing mucosal swelling. Benz alkonium chloride has affinity to the mucosa for swelling up so that leads to chances of rebound nasal congestion. Let's talk about physiology of nasal congestion. The nasal mucosal vascular system contains two vessels. The first one is resistance vessel, that is arterioles, which are predominantly regulated by alpha-2 adrenoreceptors because they cause the mucosal swelling due to blood supply. Next are the capacitance vessels or venous plexus, which are regulated by both alpha-1 and the alpha-2 adrenoreceptors. They are called capacitance vessel because they drain the blood from the nose. Stimulation of these receptors leads to the decongestant effect that is vasoconstriction of the large venous sinusoids and collecting veins leading to decreased blood flow and decreased nasal edema and rhinorrhea. The nose is supplied by the autonomic nervous system. Stimulation of the parasympathetic nervous system leads to nasal congestion and stimulation of sympathetic nervous system leads to nasal decongestion. According to adrenoreceptor activity, the internasal decongestants can be divided into beta-phenylethylamine derivatives, the primary alpha agonists like ephedrine, phenylephrine, they are not commonly used nowadays, they are banned. And next are the imidazoline derivatives or primarily alpha-2 agonists, they are oxymetazoline and xylometazoline. The imidazoline components produce the effect mainly by alpha-2 adrenoreceptors. Thus, the imidazolines are more effective due to their vasoconstrictive effect to both capacitance and resistance vessels in the nasal mucosa. As you have already seen, alpha-2 agonists, they are primarily found in both the vessels, that is the veins and the arterioles. Offending drugs for rhinitis medicaments are oxymetazoline and xylometazoline, as we have already discussed, they are the imidazoline components. Oxymetazoline is an adrenergic alpha-1 and alpha-2 agonist and a direct acting sympathomimetic drug. Therefore, this drug leads to more of the nasal decongestion or that constricts the blood vessels. Oxymetazoline causes vasoconstriction of dilated arterioles and reduces blood flow by stimulating adrenergic receptors. This drug contracts smooth muscles of venous erectile tissue present in the nasal turbinates leading to mucosal shrinkage and decreased airway resistance. So the nose will open immediately after use of oxymetazoline. Let's talk about the pathophysiology of rhinitis medicamentosa. There are many proposed theories for rhinitis medicamentosa. They are chronic vasoconstriction leads to ischemia of the nasal mucosa leading to interstitial edema. So chronic vasoconstriction basically is an inflammation that leads to interstitial edema and that leads to persistent dilatation of the blood vessels or the sinusoids. Next is fatigue of the constrictor mechanism occurs resulting in reactive hyperemia and congestion leading to reduced sensibility to the endogenous catecholamines. The adrenal receptors become refractory to nasal decongestants after some time which necessitate higher dose of medication frequently that is called as 
tachyphylaxis which has been already described. The third theory is alteration in vasomotor tone results in increased vascular permeability and edema. Same thing, increased vascular permeability and edema. Increased vascular permeability and edema leads to persistent dilatation of the sinusoids leading to nasal obstruction and nasal discharge. So in some cases, the beta activity is predominant over the alpha activity that leads to nasal congestion again. This is the flow chart of the pathogenesis. Prolonged use may lead to nasal vasoconstriction, increased parasympathetic activity, longer effect on beta receptors compared to alpha receptors, and negative feedback effect on endogenous norepinephrine, all leading to rebound congestion. What are the clinical features of rhinitis medicamentosa? The patient complains of chronic nasal block that requires increased dose and frequency of topical decongestants. The patient tells that patient has to have many drops in a single day in the interval of just hours and the patient cannot sleep at night time due to nasal congestion if the patient does not use the nasal decongestants frequently. On examination, the nasal mucosa appears hyperemic, granular and buggy in early stages and pale and anemic in later stages. This mimics bronchiectasis, that means persistent or permanent dilatation of the blood vessels or the sinusoids of the nasal mucosa. How to treat this condition? The best way to treat is immediate withdrawal of the topical decongestant if we think the patient is developing rhinitis medicaminosa. Sometimes topical decongestants can be substituted with systemic nasal decongestants for a short time. When the patient cannot tolerate the condition, we can use nasal corticosteroid sprays and oral corticosteroids for a shorter time. Next is rhinostart system. This system uses drugs or nasal decongestants in decreasing concentration of the drugs so that after some time, patient is used to for saline only. The most important treatment plan is patient education. And we should teach the patients not to use nasal decongestant drops or topical drops for more than 10 days. If they want to use, they can stop for a few days, suppose five to six days, then they can again use, but don't use nasal decongestants for persistent more than two weeks in a single episode. Patient can take steam from the nose. Patient can take short term of antihistamines or nasal corticosteroid spray and oral corticosteroids. When the patient is not benefited by withdrawal of the medicine and use of medical treatment and patient education, the patient has to undergo surgery to remove the turbinates. The process is called as turbinoplasty or turbinectomy. Therefore, patients should understand the consequences of rhinitis medicamentosa and they have to stop topical decongestant after 7 to 10 days in a single row. Thank you. Thank you very much.